Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. Today we're looking at Steam on the Retroid Pocket 5. This is not streaming from another computer. This is actually Steam running directly inside the Retroid Pocket 5, which is very exciting. As you can see, I can scroll around and choose my games. You will notice it's very laggy, but don't worry because the games are not. Only this Steam big picture mode is laggy like this. I have installed a lot of games here and I chose to install Steam on the external SD card rather than internal. So that way I have one terabyte to play with rather than just the 128 gigabyte internal drive. So let's jump into a game such as Dishonored. Just like on a Steam Deck, you can choose the game. Once again, it's going to be a little bit laggy, but don't worry about that because when we hit the play button and we get into the game, you're going to see that familiar Steam layout, which recognizes your controller input and we're going to launch into our game. As you can see, the game has launched, and for these tests, I'm going to put the Retroid Pocket 5 into high performance mode. So you might be able to hear the fan spinning up if I bring it closer to my mic. So just bear with me for that, because obviously we want to test the best performance we can get here. You'll also notice down in the bottom corner, we have some statistics such as the frames per second, and the GPU, CPU, and RAM are all in the red. They are working overtime here to try and run this game. So let's continue. I think I'm still at the beginning of this game. It must be at least 10 years since I bought this game. And I'm pretty sure I only played it for about 10 minutes and then never again. But it's definitely the kind of game that would be nice to play on something like the Retroid Pocket 5. So let's just see what kind of frame rate we can get here. And one thing you might want to pay attention to is this green line. We want it to be quite nice and smooth for good performance. Right now we're just loading into the game so it's fine. But when we're actually playing the game, if it's jumping around a lot, it's not going to be the best experience. So here we are in Dishonored 2. I don't know what any of the buttons do and the frame rate doesn't look great. The frame rate's mostly around 30 frames per second. Sorry. So let's see where we're meant to go. I guess we're meant to go over here. The frame rate's fluctuating. It's definitely dropping below 30 because I can feel that it's not super smooth at points, but at some point it's going above 40. If you'd like to play Dishonored on your Retro Pocket 5, it's not the most perfect experience in the world. It's definitely slowing down at points, but it seems playable. I also seem to remember you're meant to be quite sneaky on this game but I just can't help running around everywhere like a madman. It's too fun. Read the journal tutorial. Never. Hello. Lean around corners. Well, um, you're going to see it's a little bit too late for that because there's a guy right in my face. Excuse me. The combat in this game feels quite nice. And it feels like the frame rate's only just dipping below 30. So maybe I could lower some options here. Let's see what they've given us. They've actually given us high graphic settings. So let's just move everything down to low and see what kind of frame rate we can get. We're not able to change the resolution. And I found this in a few games that we seem to be stuck into 720p here. Maybe that's something to do with how I created the Steam environment, but it seems to be running at 720p, which I'm fine with because it looks great on this screen. While of course 1080p would be even better, let's not be greedy. So I've lowered all the settings down now. And honestly, it doesn't feel much different. We're still around 30 frames per second like we were before but Dishonored definitely works. Sorry. So let's jump into another game now, as this one clearly is not perfect, but clearly does work pretty well. So in order to get out of these games, we're going to need to actually go through the option menu and choose go back to Windows or quit game or something along those lines. Then when you do that, it will take you back to Steam. And I would advise not just completely quitting out of the application, but to give it a little bit of time just to synchronize your save file as that's one of the reasons using Steam is better than something like WinLater, because we can access our saves from the cloud and we can save to the cloud so that when I use another device, I can carry on from where I left off here. So let's jump into another game now, Vampire Survivors. This style of game is not really one that I enjoy that much, but I think it's a good fit for the Retroid Pocket 5 because I'm pretty sure we should be able to get a very solid 60 frames per second here. Here we are, and the frame rate seems completely locked in at 59 frames per second. That green bar is pretty smooth and straight. Maybe the occasional hiccup, but nothing noticeable in game. You might be able to tell that I've not really played this game that much because I'm pretty poor at it, but hopefully I'm able to show you that it runs very smoothly. It looks very sharp here on the screen. It looks great. 
And once again, an extremely smooth 60 frames per second. And because this is running through Steam, you're going to be able to access all of your cloud saves. So this is an absolute win. So now let's jump into a game that's a little bit more demanding. Once again, make sure you come down and quit the game here. Don't just close the application or you're going to lose all your progress. Although to be honest in this, I'm going to lose my progress anyway because I wasn't at a save point, but I'm sure you get the idea of what I meant. You can see here that I've actually installed loads of games to try out here, but if I tried all of them, this video would be way too long. So I am considering doing a live stream soon where we can run through some of these games. So let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in watching a live stream with a lot more testing. Next up, we have Mirror's Edge. And I very strongly remember playing this on this terrible old laptop I had. And the laptop was so bad that I couldn't finish the tutorial. So we're gonna have to start again from the tutorial. I just remember playing the tutorial over and over and it would always crash in the same part. I seem to remember there was this part where these men would chase you and you have to run away from them. And every time I got to that part, the laptop would just completely crash and freeze up. So let's just run through a bit of the tutorial again for nostalgic purposes and let's see how well it can run here on the Retroid Pocket 5. So here we are back in the tutorial, which for me is very familiar. And if there are any Mirror's Edge players out there, I would like to ask you, is the movement meant to be reversed? By which I mean, when you move down, you move forwards. And when you move up, you go backwards. That seems very odd, but we'll just roll with it for now. Looking at the graph down here, we're quite solid at 30 frames per second, but definitely some jumps happening, as you can see by the little peaks and troughs in the graph. I'm looking at the frame rate counter and it seems to be pretty solid around 30. Sometimes going up to 31, sometimes dropping to 29. We got a 24 there. But once again, definitely a playable experience, but not super smooth, which I think is kind of the state of where things are right now with Steam games on the Retro Pocket 5. But to be honest with you guys, about a month ago, I wouldn't have thought this would even be possible to be running Steam games like this. The fact that we can now just sign into Steam on our Retro Pocket 5s and then start playing our Steam cloud saves, that's amazing to me. And while yes, this performance is not incredible, it's very close to a solid 30 frames per second. How do I open this door? There you go. So yeah, this is bringing back a lot of memories for me right now. And it seems like it's running pretty well. Let's just see if we can play with the settings a little bit. We seem to be once again locked into 1080p. And I'm not sure why, but we don't seem to be able to change any of the settings. Maybe we need to get through the tutorial first. But that would not line up with my experience of this game, which is a tutorial only game in my lifetime. So let's now jump into another game, one that I'm very excited to try, and one that I've played quite a lot of in the past, and I think you will know very well. So let's once again quit to the main menu. We'll press X to quit the game, which is actually Y in our case. Here we are in Skyrim. Yes, this is my Steam save of Skyrim. And it's not running beautifully. We're only getting around 30 frames per second. We might need to do a little bit more optimization because in Winlater, you can easily get 60 frames per second in Skyrim. But this is more of just a little peek into the future because running the game this way means no complicated install procedures, just installing through Steam like normal. Then if I want to carry on my save on say my Steam Deck or maybe even my desktop PC, I can just go do that and it will all be synchronized. So while we do need to optimize the performance a little bit, the potential here is huge. And I think this is a massive breakthrough in Windows emulation on a device like this. So if you'd like to set this up for yourself, check out the link in the description to a video showing you exactly how to do that. And you can also check out my Discord as well, where we have a dedicated game hub section. So if you run into any issues, we'll all help you out. Also in the description of this video, you'll see my new beacons.ai link, which is something I've made just to try and put all of these links in one convenient place. So you'll see there the link to the Discord, this YouTube channel, and affiliate links where you can pick up your own Retroid Pocket 5 and a few other devices, including the subject of tomorrow's video, the Odin 2 Portal, which is basically a bigger, more powerful Retroid Pocket 5. And I will be testing those Steam games on this tomorrow and seeing if we can get any of them running up to 120 frames per second second on this beautiful 120 hertz screen. So make sure you check that out, like and subscribe if you didn't already, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll try these games out on this bad boy. Thanks for watching, bye.